it's Gothic Angel here and I am going to do a quick reading and a bit of a review just to show a little bit in regards to shadow work and the deck that we are going to use just arrived so I'm not familiar with it so it won't be a very accurate reading but this is the box and it is Victoria Francis Oracle Cards very gothic looking, very sturdy box and again surprisingly this is coming from Low Scarabio and I will open this up here now it does come as you see here with the ribbon which makes it very easy to take the cards out or the book out of the box so that you're not having to tip it upside down like I just did. So yeah, very nice. And I'll just set those off to the side. And this is the booklet that comes with it. This is very similar to some of the other Oracle decks that you've probably looked at. I'll show you a comparison in the sizes. This is a size of one of Doreen Virtue's boxes. And this is the size, put that together, this is the size of the Victoria Francis on the side. If you look at the two of these, they are pretty much the same size, the same width, the same height. But a nice addition with this was the ribbon on the bottom to help pull the cards out. Alright, we'll look at the cards. The book, again, is very similar to... Uh, what we got with our Doreen Virtue books. Um, doesn't show images of the cards, but it does uh, speak to all the cards. It is 120, 126 pages, the last page, 127 and it will give you a little bit of information on layouts as we see here. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with this. Uh, what I want to do is do a quick video here on how I would use these for my own shadow work. Now they're, they're again they're just about the same as any of the others. They don't shuffle really well because of their size. Not too bad this way if you're doing it the old way. Alright, so I'm going to pull... We're going to pull out three cards here. Yeah. Put them up there so you can see. That's one, two, and three. Move that back a little bit. Move those in view. Alright, and with our first card, what I'm going to do is just look at the image, and I'm going to think to myself, she's holding a, a very tight grip to this tree. We've got moonlight, we've got um, a time when others are normally not out and about, so something is happening that's going on at a time when it shouldn't be possibly. She's looking like the water is very still so it's not a river, it's not a, a dangerous water, but she doesn't really want to be there. She's clinging to the land as much as she can. So if I were looking at shadow work I would, I would, I would be feeling her feelings. I'd be looking and saying she doesn't seem horribly sad. If you look at the expression on her face, I'm going to get it up close. She looks like she's holding on, but she's not holding on for dear life. So she's not in any immediate danger. However, she doesn't look incredibly happy. She looks pretty well dressed. Could be an evening dress, but it looks like something has happened to her. We don't know what. So that's how I get off of the initial look at the, the card. My second card, if we look at her closely, 
we can tell she's been crying. We can tell she's very sad. She's, as you look closer on her dress, she's got blood dripping on her. So something has happened. Uh, she's wearing a wreath of flowers around her head. And when you get really close in, we see an angel right behind her. So my feelings would be, I'm, I'm sorry for her. I feel like something has happened to her. She's not safe. But the angels are looking after her. So that would be my immediate response. She's, she's, her dress is grubby. She looks like she's had a difficult experience and she is in a graveyard. So we could assume that something has happened to someone she cares about, but that's all we really know so far from this, from this card. This card has two girls in a lovely pond. It's a fish pond because it's got the, the lilies in it. And in the background, if you look, you can see in the background there, something else is going on. We don't know, but something's not right, and these other little girls are experiencing it. So, I'm disturbed. I don't know exactly why, but now I have to take a look at some of these feelings. But I'm going to grab the book now and take a look and see what the book says. And I didn't show the, the back of the cards well. I had the others out, so I'll just show that to you now. And we'll take the book out. And our first, the, our first card was number seven, so fairly easy to go to number seven here. And number seven reads, there we go, I had the wrong language, so. It says, when you recognize the beauty is within, your sense of worth becomes more confident and stronger through these murky waters, the tree represents the strength, the need to hold on to some sort of stability that's important now. So now we're looking at the card and we're realizing she's going through something. She's not terrified, but it's a change. It's not something she's extremely comfortable with. And she's holding on very tight to the tree because it's her strength. It's the thing that's going to provide stability for her in a time when things are changing. So it's telling her to trust her intuition so she's not afraid she she's strong in the things that are going that are going on within herself to understand to trust herself our second card is number 6 and number 6 in the book number 6 here we read and it says whether you feel you have psychic abilities or not, rest assured you are being looked after by the forces. So this is our angel in the background. Even if you're not trusting yourself, you can trust the forces behind you. And once you accept that beginnings and endings are inevitable, your life will flow again. So she has lost someone. She's in the graveyard. If you've experienced major changes, it is okay to feel apprehensive and fearful. However, this card suggests that you need nurturing in order to heal yourself and let go of a closed chapter in your life. You may be grieving over a physical death, the death of a project, an ending of a relationship, and so on. So she's experiencing, uh, from what we can see here, she's, she's actually experiencing grief. Grief can come in a lot of forms. It can be your children um, are grown up and um, have gone on to college and they're not with you there anymore and you don't have them around it could be any number of things it can be your child goes to kindergarten or goes to grade one and you're suddenly things are changing and you're not feeling okay this this card tells you that it's okay and to trust that you have the ability to go on and the angels will always be there with you our third card number five let's take a look and see what that said as we look in our book, number five, the feminine energy within you needs to be nurtured. There is a feeling of sadness, which at times may overwhelm, and this may be due to your feeling unsupported. If you feel you are not part of the crowd, then maybe it is time to seek out new friends. There may be, then maybe it's time to seek out new friends, connect with new groups, discover new places where social connections can be made. 
There is a strong woman in your life who will help to guide you, support and influence you, your life. This is the right time to connect with them. Uh, you don't have to walk the path yourself. Now, I didn't get that from the card. Um, when I was looking at this, I, I saw the sad children and what came to my mind right away uh, from seeing this, to be perfectly honest, was I felt that there was possibly some kind of um, sexual abuse going on and the other girls had experienced it. So this might be some shadow work that I would have to look at inside myself to see why did I feel that? Why did that card make me feel like that? So I hope that explains a little bit on what shadow work is. And I am looking forward to using this deck. It looks like it's going to be a wonderful deck. Thanks very much. Gothic Angel saying bye for now.